What's up internet, it's your soul here and just gonna show you this amazing video from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, the group that represents over 2,000 professional architects and engineers who have signed their name to statements saying that the official government version of what transpired on 9-11 in New York is impossible and that the government is basically lying in America. This is a great video here, I've covered the collapse of building World Trade Center 7 uh, recently in my own video and I included some footage in there such as for example you can see flashes going off inside the building prior to it collapsing and this is a big deal because the government's version of events is that this building came down due to fires, office fires, melting steel and that this had never basically happened before in history and they stated that themselves you know under these sorts of circumstances and they even called for increased safety standards following this event because, oh wow, you know, the the combined knowledge of structural engineering for decades has been wrong, apparently. Um, no airplane hit World Trade Center 7. It was the third building to come down that day next to the main two towers. And it's a huge story into itself. And I recommend, if you don't know about it, doing some deep dive and research into that subject. But uh, recently, the Alaska Fairbanks University published a study after four years of work into the collapse of World Trade Center Building 7 in which they concluded that no the building did not come down due to office fires came down due to the simultaneous failure of all supporting columns which can only really happen due to controlled demolition though they didn't actually specifically say we know that it's a controlled demolition but there's viably no other real explanation that you could put forward for that kind of scenario happening. So this video has just been uploaded, it's only a short one, I'm going to show you the whole thing. It's from Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth and it includes some of the footage which I knew existed and I probably have somewhere on my computer but uh, I just haven't had time to go through and dig it all out and put it into a video. They've thankfully done that really well and it, it shows you scenes that I've seen over the years and most people have never seen, and you know they get lost in the massive wealth of research material that's available on the internet. But they put them together, and it shows you very clearly here that numerous people knew that World Trade Center 7 was coming down. Numerous people said the fire department said that it was coming down in a controlled demolition. And you know there's one problem with that, which is that in order for that to be the case, those demolition charges would have had to have been put there long in advance of that day. No one had time to put them in there, and indeed no one has said that they did put them in there. So how exactly did World Trade Center 7 come down through controlled demolition, uh, according to the fire department and numerous witnesses, uh, if the charges weren't already in there? And then that if they were already in there, obviously that means that not only has the NIST report misled the world, which we know they have anyway, um, but this then opens obviously the door to the highly probable likely outcome that the main two towers one and two also had demolition charges inside them as claimed by many people as well so let's just take a look before you discount what i'm saying is nonsense listen to this evidence it's i would say very compelling Remember, seven, 7 World Trade had not yet come down. Right. And so when I went down to the exchange that Wednesday morning, I was standing with some military and, and, and police officers, and we were looking over in that direction. And if it had come down in the way in which it was tilting, it would have wiped out everything from where it stood to Trinity Church to the exchange to, to effectively, you know, the mouth of the Hudson. And so there were still fears that if that building had fallen sideways, you were going to wipe out a good part of lower Manhattan. So they did manage, one, to take that down in a controlled implosion later on, and the exchange was up and running the following Monday. That building right there, the brown building, the tall one, is number seven, World Trade Center. I've heard several reports from several different officers now that that is the building that is going to go down next. In fact, one officer told me they're just waiting for that to come down at this point. By noon or one o'clock, they told us we had to move from that triage site up to Pace University, a little further away, because Building 7 was going to come down or being brought down. Did they actually use the word brought down, and who was it that was telling you this? In the fire department. 
the fire department, and um, they did use the word, we're going to have to bring it, we're going to have to bring it down. You hear that? Keep your eye on that building, it'll be coming down. The building is about to blow up, move it back. We are walking back, there's a building about to blow up. Oh my God, look behind us, please pan in this way, please, be careful of your baby. This is it. That's the building coming down. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. And I turned in time to see uh, what looked like uh, a skyscraper implosion. It looked like it had been done by a demolition crew. It was almost as if it were a planned implosion. It just pancaked. Third time today. It's reminiscent of those pictures we've all seen too much on television before when a building was deliberately destroyed by world-placed dynamite to knock it down. Can you confirm it was number seven that just went in? Yes, sir. Uh, and you were you guys knew this was coming all day? We had been had we had heard reports that the building was unstable and that it eventually would either come down on its own or it would be taken down. We heard this, this sound that sounded like a clap of thunder. It looked like there was um, a shock wave uh, ripping through the building and the windows all uh, busted out. About a second later, the bottom floor came out. The building followed after that. You heard explosions. It's like a distinct sound. It's not like when the compression, like boom, 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 like floors that were dropping and collapsing. This was boom. Like the whole time you hear boom, 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 boom. I didn't see any reason for that building to fall down the way it did. And a lot of guys should be saying the same thing. So they did manage, one, to take that down in the controlled implosion later on. And the exchange was up and running the following Monday. Okay, so what can you say about that? You've got so many witnesses there, so many actual uh, agents tasked with important roles as well speaking. I think they're uh, all describing how they knew in advance that this building was either likely to or was definitely about to come down, and many people saying that it was going to be brought down. And there's the famous footage of Larry Silverstein, the leaseholder of the World Trade Center complex, who received the world's biggest insurance payout, I think, after this. Um, many, many billions of dollars, um, stating, bizarrely, in a in a video interview that he spoke to the fire department and they made the decision to pull it, talking about World Trade Center 7. So he's literally saying there, you know, as the, all these other people are saying, that the fire department pulled it, pulled it. So, you know, as they pointed in this video, there's a problem with that. No one has actually described placing the charges to do that, and to do it would have taken probably more than a day, and certainly people wouldn't have wanted to risk their lives to go in there to place those charges. Very unlikely, anyway, um, when there's so much other work to be done, and there was actually no obvious overt risk that that building would come down on its own, even though some people there were saying they thought it might do. Uh, based on the fact that there were, the only damage to it, really, the only significant damage was the office fires that were in, happening inside, which, um, you know, the Alaska Fairbanks study basically did a pretty good job, you know, as far as I can tell, as a layman, uh, demonstrating would not have brought that building down. And there are countless examples of towers burning with far more intense fires for much longer without the tower coming down than, than happened there. So experience and logic would tell you that people on the ground, such as the fire department, would not really have expected that building to come down unless there was a specific reason other than the fire for that to happen. So... Yeah, I mean, there's always people that will try and poo-poo these things and say, well, no, that's not what happened, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, if that's what you think, if you think all these pieces of evidence that have been put together, including the, those that I'll link in the video that I made a few weeks ago, if you think all of them are meaningless and can all be explained away using the government's NIST report, then go ahead, try it. But, you know, I think you'll find that most people are not going to really believe you. And with good reason. And you'll have to do a lot of work, basically, to demonstrate that this evidence is meaningless that we've just seen and that is in, as I said, the other video that I put together. And the reason why so many people have focused on all of this for so long is because this isn't just about a building coming down. This is about the difference between uh, the official story upon which wars were waged and millions of lives lost being true or fiction. And if it's if, if, if the official government story is true, then you know, people can say to some extent some of the actions that happened after that might be justified. Although, you know, arguably starting a war with Iraq, who has never been actually tied to the alleged terrorists, probably isn't something that could be justified anyway. However, if the story 
of this collapse of this building from the government is false, it brings into question all the other things that they've claimed. And it does bring into question those other things they've claimed, and it always has done. And it means that the many, many, many whistleblowers, the many, many, many bits of information and evidence tied into this event, which point very strongly towards the collapse of the World Trade Center, the whole event and the attack on the Pentagon being an inside job involving US military and probably other secret services and elements of the US government. It means that the chances of that are dramatically increased. In fact, they're, in my opinion, pretty much guaranteed, uh, which means that the world has a huge problem. The world definitely does have a huge problem, but at least now that this evidence gradually is being packaged into formats that average people can go and look at quickly and scratch their head out and think, well, that doesn't make sense. Why have I never seen that before? Now we actually stand a chance of seeing some significant change as people start to really realise the extent to which they've been lied to for so long. It really is like a horror movie, and yes, people have been lied to on a scale that most people's lie detectors in their brains just aren't big enough. They're not calibrated to detect. You're not looking for lies this big, so you don't see them. Just a quick note, I can see on here on this logo, as you can, that this now says 3,000+, plus, which I presume refers to the number of architects and engineers who have signed their statement saying that they disagree with the government's official report and uh, assessment of what happened on 9-11. Uh, last time I looked, which was quite a long time ago, it was 2,000, so they've obviously had an extra 1,000 sign up. So you've now got 3,000 qualified architects and engineers, people who are professionals in the field, stating that they do not accept the government's official version of what happened to these towers and presumably also the Pentagon. So that really means that anybody who's going to stand up and say, no, no, this is all nonsense, you're all idiots, you know, get your tinfoil hat out and that kind of thing, Basically, they need to be professional enough to be able to rebut the claims of 3,000 professionals in this field as a, as a minimum. So, you know, please do think about that before you open your mouth on this and be aware that that's the standard you're going to be held to. If you can do that, then go for it. You know, you'll, you'll, you'll make the news. <laughs> and I look forward to hearing from you. Uh, so, yeah, go for it. So what are we going to do with all this information? Well, that's up to us, isn't it? Uh, you know, you need to think outside the box as they say think outside the prescribed narrative and start i would suggest taking steps in your life to uh, prevent this kind of thing happening in future and wrestling power away from the megalomaniac psychopath who uh, have no problem causing a million people's deaths if it means achieving their political and personal power games and their objectives you know, there is no word for that other than psychopath and They've been running governments for quite a long time, so things can't really get much worse than that And, and until these people act again, and then they do another terrible thing, and then gradually things get worse and worse and worse. But from a governmental perspective, things can't really get much worse than that. And that's where we're at, and that's where we've been at for a long time. So I want you to really think about that and contemplate what your options are, because you do have options. You don't have to keep feeding into this system and empowering it constantly. Uh, changes can't be made. It's not that difficult. So anyway, as usual, thanks a lot for watching. And as I said, please do leave comments if you've got any underneath, wherever you see this. I'm posting regularly on the Steam blockchain, on Eureka.org, on YouTube, on Minds.com, Twitter, and so on. Uh, so please do go along there and give me a thumbs up and an upvote and a share and so on and pass this on to your friends. And let's do what we can to make the world a better place. Until next time, peace.